Aloha friends and family, back to you for another Cusco Uncut. And for those of you watching for the very first time, we upload three videos a week here. One of them is this uncut version because the other ones are cut hundreds of times and edited. And this is our one time a week to not cut and just talk about things. Here you go. This isn't my favorite thing to talk about. I kind of wish I didn't feel like I wanted to talk about it or didn't need to talk about it, but I do think I do because it's just been permeating my brain waves so much. Even after deleting Facebook off my phone just because I was kind of over it, it was having nothing but just seeing everybody's posts in that fashion was just, it was bringing me down a bit. So I was just like, oh, I'll just get rid of that for a bit. And uh, I don't claim and I will never claim to have all the answers to end the world's problems because it's a very complicated world of people that we live in. And there's, I believe, always going to be problems in the world of people for as long as we exist on this planet. That's just kind of the reality I've come to. So rather than try and figure out solutions, I figure I just kind of speak from my own experience and maybe at least form a basis of a platform from where I can come to and help, help communicate what are in my opinion, very complicated thoughts on a very complicated topic and issue uh, as to the best of my ability and help you guys understand where I'm coming from. And, and so if you, for those of you who don't know, I am Russian, French, English, Filipino, Pacific Islander, all that stuff is within me. So just on a genetic level, my DNA, if, if, if one side was racist then, and the other side is racist, well, I've been constantly at battle with myself just genetically, just in my DNA. If, if race is a thing that's built into your DNA, which it has been constructed to be, I've always been against myself. <laughs> so it's, it's an interesting perspective to be coming from right off the bat, I believe. I will say, I, don't, I didn't really know what race was until I was maybe as late as middle school. I don't think I really understood what race was just because I didn't come from that type of upbringing. Uh, my, obviously my dad was the Russian, uh, those of you that have met my dad, obviously he's the Russian, French, English side. My mom's the Filipino Pacific Islander side. And it wasn't long before they got married that it was actually illegal to, for them to have gotten married in the States. In fact, my uncle, um, who had passed away a couple years back when he got married, he was the one that told me and it's caught me. I was so surprised. I was mind blown. And he's like, at the time that him and my auntie had gotten married, it was illegal for them to have gotten married. And that just blew my mind because they're such great people and always have been just shining examples of human beings. Uh, my dad in, in particular looked up to my uncle as, as the man who he aspired to be as, as far as a man, as far as somebody who takes care of his family. And, and they did that. If you went to their house, it was just um, everybody was always treated with respect that walked through that door. And all the stuff that's happening today, I, I think it goes beyond um, the race, which I do believe is a human construct, uh, something that is a learned thing. I definitely learned it. Uh, and it also goes back to tribal stuff. Like there's, there was a, definitely a point in our time when it was beneficial to be wary of anybody that was different or that you didn't recognize because maybe resources were tight and it might have been a battle. It might have been a, a fight for survival at that point. Um, my own experience with, with police growing up, the first time I remember police was when I was in first grade and I lived in LA at the time, kind of close to downtown LA, uh, Echo Park. And at our school, there was a shootout between police and a gang outside and we had to stay in class extra long. And it didn't affect me, I don't think that much. I don't think I really understood when I was six years old exactly what was happening. I, mean, I heard guns firing outside and the principal was coming, going around to the different classrooms and came into our classroom and said, you know, we're going to stay inside the classrooms until this is over. And I think maybe I thought that, uh, I, was, I was thinking the police, it's a good thing that the police are there kind of like to keep us safe. And, but it, that didn't last for a lot, much longer after that. In fact, uh, I had many run-ins with the, the police as an adolescent and it, they were never good. Um, not that I w was always innocent in any of the scenarios. You know, skateboarding was definitely a big one we weren't supposed to be doing. And I had a lot of run-ins with the cops because of that. But uh, there were many times as well where I would just get sat down on the curb and um, 
detained, I guess you would call it, for no other reason. No, no reason at all. I was doing nothing. I remember one time I was riding a bike with my dad, and we split off from each other for like a little couple blocks. Like he went one way, I went the other way. And that was one of those times when I just got stopped, sat down, searched, for no reason whatsoever. I, I assumed then it was a racial profiling thing. It may have been a class profiling thing. We didn't live in the ritzy area of town. Uh, that, that could have played into it. I'm not sure. The, the cop was, uh, I'm pretty sure he was a Mexican guy. But I'm, I'm not sure. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. This is a complicated topic. It's very complicated. I can feel it getting all mixed up in my head as I'm trying to talk about it. I'm trying to keep it simple. I'm trying to keep it simple. But, but also just trying to form where my perspective is coming from. Now, I believe everybody's an individual. And I think that most of us out here are reasonable enough to believe that as well. And, uh, oh my gosh, train of thought is just all whacked out. There's, it's such an emotional topic. It, it can, there's so much emotion that gets wrapped up in it, which often, I think, probably gets in the way or, or makes it more difficult to find a solution or a reasonable outcome for everybody. Uh, do I think that rioting is good? Not necessarily. Do I think that it's a much faster way to get attention and drive a message? Absolutely. Uh, I think also that breaking glass can be quite a cathartic thing. Do I think it's uh, right to go and smash somebody else's property? No. Do I think that it gives some sort of relief to the person that's feeling so rot? I can only imagine coming from a place where you're feeling tr so trapped that you just need to go out and smash things. Um, I have felt like that in my, in my life. I'm older now. Probably when I was in my 20s, I would have been out there smashing stuff too. It's very possible. Um, again, I don't think it's, it's right, but it's, it's a thing. And it definitely gets attention. <laughs> uh, yeah. I know, this is a much easier topic to discuss with somebody else instead of just speaking into a camera for me. Maybe it was smarter to write some things down, which I didn't do. But I'm just going to give it to you guys raw, raw as I see it. So going back to my upbringing, or going back to my relationship with law enforcement growing up, wasn't good. I kind of, through my entire adolescence and even into my early adulthood, had never had a, a really positive experience with any police. And that's... Uh, it's tough to say, but it's true. I didn't see them as people that were there to serve and protect. Uh, even though I, I now, you know, at the time I had an uncle who was an officer, and I now have a cousin who's currently an officer, and I only assume that they always treated people out there and did their duty to the best of their abilities and treated everyone with respect, first and foremost. Now, I know the police have a very difficult job. I do believe there should be better training, and with that training should also come much higher pay because they're putting their lives on the line to protect and serve. That is the job, right? Protect and serve. Even though I was so jaded about that idea about these guys aren't here to protect and serve me, it's never happened once. It's always me getting set on the curb, and uh, and I didn't see it as a, as a racial thing even in that state because I remember one time we were at a party, and... I, and this is where I think it's more of a class issue. If we had been in a more affluent part of town, I don't think it would have gone down the exact way it did. So what, what happened is we were having a party, you know, it was illegal because there were people there drinking underage, but it wasn't getting out of control, maybe a little bit loud, which is probably why the police ended up coming, but nobody was, there wasn't any violence, nothing like that was happening. Everybody was having a good time. But when the police came, the kid whose house it was, who, because of the topic we're talking about, he was a Caucasian kid, um, didn't like the fact that the police just came in his house and he was very vocal about it. They grabbed him, took him outside, and proceeded to beat him in the street and forced us, the rest of us, at, to sit at, on the curb basically and, and watch it all go down. And that definitely drove home the idea that these guys are not right. Like there was nothing right about the way that situation went down. Um, and that's why I think definitely better training for, for situations like that. And there was likely cor corruption in our, in our town in the police force. Um, I remember stories of some of my friends being taken on the back roads in kind of like an eerie situation where they're trying to press inf information out on these dark back roads at night. Like, you better talk to us type thing. That's, that, that's scary. That's, that's the type of stuff that I think definitely needs to change and has been going on for a long time. And uh, where I definitely agree with the protesting and, and everything to, that is trying to push forward to change that type of thing. What is the solution? Again, I, I don't know. But I did think I owed it, at least to my viewers, with everything going on. I don't really know anybody that doesn't realize that this is happening. 
right now. And, and it, it, it is at this time where major change is being pushed for. And it obviously comes very slowly because this is something that's been being pushed for for a long time. Uh, I, I definitely am a strong believer that <laughs> It is possible for most of us to get along and that and hopefully I really do hope that we're moving towards a better thing we are a young country relatively speaking and uh, I think we're just kind of going through the throes of, of making that happen there's there have been terrible things that have happened in this country but there's also really lots of good things that happen in this country and it's because of that diversity and hopefully we can all kind of unlearn these negative things about each other and, and learn about the good things that everybody has to offer to each other in this world regardless of how we look whether we're rich whether we're poor that's a very optimistic viewpoint i have but i tend to be a bit of an optimist even in in some of the darker of times so anyway i, I hope these ramblings and musings at least brought you some kind of uh thought of well-being if, if i want to leave you with anything in this totally chaotic rambling of my mind is that I, I hope that everybody out there watching this takes a minute to sit and reflect on the fact that we are all in this together. We all share this earth together and we, we need to do our best to try and treat other people with respect no matter the color of their skin, no matter if they're rich, if they're poor, if they have a hundred thousand YouTube subscribers or no YouTube subscribers. It shouldn't matter. All, the, all that stuff, that shouldn't be what goes into creating how we judge or look at a person. It should be that person's actions and what that person stands for that we look at a person and decide how and who that person is based, based on their actions and, and their heart and their soul. Not on all these external things that we as humans are constantly trying to classify things, putting, putting everything into boxes. Our political system is ridiculous. The fact that we have two parties to choose from is like black, white, red, blue, zero, one. It's so inhuman to me. Being human is a, is a beautiful thing. The diversity of being human is a, is a beautiful thing to me. And I, I think to try and break it down to such a simple thing is one of the base problems that we have is trying to make things so simple and put them in boxes. But it's our nature. I mean, we do it with the species that we keep. We're always trying to classify things into this specific order, uh, reclassifying, you know, the boa constrictor constrictor into just boa constrictor. Like it's part of our nature to do that. And it's often can lead to good things, compiling that information and classifying it. But as we see with these current events, uh, it can lead to some very tumultuous times as well. So do your best to figure it out. Um, speak with other people. Don't assume things about other people. And just we all, we all play a part in making this a better world for each other and our families and our future generations. So we can only do so much, but hopefully that thing that we do helps to build us as a stronger community and a, a population of this planet. So that's my hope. I really do feel very strongly about it. It's something I'm always teaching my kids is, is to treat, just how to treat people correctly. And I think it's, education is the biggest key and losing the ignorance and, and bringing light to whatever ignorance is out, out there about anything. And just more information, more education to help each other be better citizens of the world. Goes for you too, bird. <laughs>